Jesus says to us today in our text, follow me. The same word that he spoke during his ministry several times and continues to do that every generation. How do people respond? Well, we know in varied ways. Some say, no, no, want no part of him. Others say, well, not quite ready, not quite ready. And others, by the power of the Spirit, yes, I will follow you. How are we responding to Jesus? Follow me. What will, how will we respond today and in the days to come? The question then really is, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, our text helps us. So let's look here to Luke chapter 9. Jesus is moving from Galilee into Samaritan, Samaria and then on to Jerusalem. And you'll notice the people in Samaria were re welcoming Jesus. And James and John were very angry. And they said, let's just put fire on them, get, get rid of them. And Jesus rebuked them. And this is a reminder to us that Jesus isn't interested in destroying people. He brings people hope. And so while he's journeying there, three men come to, up to Jesus. They, each of them have known him in various ways. We don't know the history of who they are. But the one man comes and says to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. How's that for volunteering? Yeah, I'll follow you wherever. And ever, whenever we hear volunteers speak like that, we wonder, oh boy, I wonder if they know what they're getting into, you know. <laughs> Uh, but that's what he's saying. I'll follow you wherever go, you go. And Jesus answers them. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So Jesus here is basically saying, if you're looking to me for security and stability, you better look elsewhere because I'm like foxes and birds. They fly around. That's the way I am, but he then goes on to say, they have, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but I don't even have a place to lay my head. I don't have that kind of security and stability. So if you're looking for that, then look elsewhere. And he also is saying to them and to us that if we're going to follow him, we have to realize that our own security and stability doesn't come first. Jesus comes first. And so to place Jesus first means that we love him more than anything or anyone else. Even things such as security and stability. Well, a second man comes to Jesus, and Jesus says to him, follow me. But the man replied, first, let me go and bury my father. He said, first, I have something else to take care of. And we can identify with that. Huh? First, I gotta take care of a few things. He has to bury his father. Now what he wants to do is very honorable and right. As a son, that's very important for him, especially in that culture because the day you die, you get buried. And he had to take care of that. So what he was saying was honorable. But Jesus' response to him is, sounds very harsh. It's one of those sayings of Jesus. You say, I wish he hadn't said that. <laughs> but he really said it. But what did he mean? He say, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He's saying, there will be people that take care of things, but you to follow me, that's your calling. Now you go and give the witness word of Jesus. Now that's the word to us also. We have family responsibilities. We all do. We know how important, and especially in our day and age culture now, family means so much. And yet Jesus is saying that we can't let family come first. We'll talk more of that later. But he's saying, you follow me. And with my witness and my word, you go and be doing that. That comes first. Now, a third man comes to Jesus, and he says, 
I will follow you, Lord. I'll follow you. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Similar response, isn't it? He says, first, I have to take care of something. And what he has to take care of, again, we say that's so honorable, so right. But Jesus doesn't respond to that. In fact, he says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. He uses the picture of agriculture, farming, uh, which I know th nothing about, some of you do. But when you plow a field, you know you have to look straight and have a focus, a clear goal. You gotta keep going and follow that straight line. Because if you look backward, you foul up the whole project. And that's what Jesus is saying here. To follow me, you stay with that clearly. You can't look backward. You can't be distracted. And that's really what Jesus is saying to you and me also. To follow him means to put him first. And many times that will involve things of even not letting our own family come first. Now, thankfully, that's very rare, but yet Jesus' word is clear, isn't it? To follow him means to put him, his word, hit his witness first. Now, that's a clear goal. We were talking, Judy and I were talking about this week in terms of goals, you know, seeing that clear direction. And we were saying, you know, for both of us, we many times forget this. You know, that happens to me, too. You know, you're just cruising along in life, and you don't even think about it. you got so many other things to take care of. And it's easy simply to omit clearly what's the goal, what's the focus. Does that happen to you, too? Well, when that happens, we need to got, get our focus back. And so, because you see, we all set goals in life. We all do, and it's important. Again, it's a wonderful thing, just like family is a wonderful thing. So also are goals, whether it be in our work, in our family, in our business, whatever it is, our community, we set goals and seek to accomplish them. But the goal for us here, then, is to put Jesus first, that Jesus is the center of our goals. His word and his witness comes first. And in that context, in that spirit and light, then we work toward our other goals. And what we learn is that when we give that first attention to Jesus, his word and his witnesses, that goal, other goals come, become more clear and more accomplished, really. And, you know, it reminds us of what Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God. And you see, the kingdom of God is Jesus at work. Seek first the kingdom of God and then all these other things will be added. When we let Jesus, following Jesus, be our real goal, then all these other things come into clarity and meaning, and they're accomplished in Jesus' name and his purposes. So that's the word today. Follow me, he says. It means to put him first. Now, we all fall short on that. We all fall short. But today we remember, above all, the one who's speaking this word to us. The one who's saying, follow me, is Jesus. And there's no one like Jesus. No one ever, ever, or will be like Jesus. Think of it. He's the word who became flesh, the eternal son, one with the Father and the Spirit from all eternity. He came and clothed himself in our human flesh. He's our brother. And he knows what we go through. He feels what we feel. He understands. He knows what fear is. He knows what uncertainty is. He knows what struggle and pain more than we'd ever know. He's been through it all. And so he knows what we go through. He knows our weaknesses, too. And so when we come to him with the times that we've fallen short, we know that he welcomes us. Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will in no way cast out. And he really means that. Jesus, the one who is our brother. And at the same time, the eternal Son of God, he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. 
And he's really in control. And when we live in our time, and that's true of every age and generation, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of things going on, people disagreeing, all kinds of directions, things happening that we don't fully grasp or even understand or even, even appreciate. But through it all, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. He's in charge. And the promise is that he is head over all things for his people, for his church. All those things are happening that there can be blessings in our lives. Now, we don't see that. We live by faith, not by sight. But that's the promise we live by. And this is the same Jesus who also pours out the Holy Spirit. He gives that spirit to us, that spirit of God who bears fruit in us and through us, those things like love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Those are things we can't produce by our own willpower. That's the fruit of the Spirit in us. So when Jesus says, follow me, he at the same time is pouring out the Holy Spirit upon us so that in our witness of him, it can be a way of life of showing that gracious love of his and also bearing testimony of him. So he calls us to follow him and he gives us the Spirit where we can say yes and that Spirit of God is just with us as we go forward. So Jesus now, to follow him means he comes first. We can't look backward in the sense of letting all kinds of distractions get us off track. We keep our focus on Jesus and we have that promise that with him as our Lord and our friend, our brother, that all these other things that we work toward in life, they too come to pass according to his time, his will, and his purposes. May God grant that for you and me. Amen.